me show these suckers how to ball out here. Oh, man, let's get this together here. Oh, layup. Oh, shot. Oh, three. Three. Oh, it's like Brick City out here. Mid-range. Oh, my goodness. I can't buy a bucket out here. I missed the whole damn basket. Oh, my God. What's going on, man? My game is looking trash. Rat oh, here we go. Black Power Media shirt. Now we cooking. Now we cooking. Tree. Tree. I'm taking off tree of y'all with these right here. Between the legs. Oh, my goodness. Behind the back. Layup. Oh, and then he just threw a reverse. He is in beast mode out here. I ain't got to look. It's falling. Oh, my goodness. This guy is going. Three, two, one. Kobe. Nice. Black Power Media, baby. Nice. Empower yourself. Go get me some of that Black Power Media again. Right here at blackpowermedia.org. Yep. Saturday. With Renee. 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 <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What's up, world? What's Welcome up? Welcome to What's another up? edition. Saturdays with Renee, Renee Johnston, Jared Ball. How you feeling, Renee? What's going Man, on? And listen, it's just too much happening at once, as usual. As usual. So, yeah. So just so we're clear, everybody, this is a pre-record uh, on, on my request, unfortunately. And because of that, Renee's rushing. I'm rushing. Everything is... <laughs> But uh, so as as this is airing, I'm on my way. Yeah, I, I'll be en route to uh, catch up with uh, uh, Eugene per year at Ooh. an event in Cleveland. So stay tuned oh, for that. Cool. All right. Yeah, I get to I get to I get to make myself look ridiculous sitting next to him on a panel. <laughs> you always say uh, that though. But, nah, you but always say that. I mean, yeah, but. But anyway, so I look forward to that, and uh, uh, but that's why we're, we had to pre-record. So we appreciate that, and and we will do our thing, and of course, be out of the way for Warrior Class. So, uh, but other than that, Renee, how you feeling? How you doing? It's, How's man, everything? It's it's just a lot, man. Is it just me? It's a lot, isn't no, it? No, it's a it's lot. A lot. And, you ha and, and, and having seen you at your job, you're doing this working with a lot of young folks, which I think is, is maybe even an additional a lot in terms of first world problems. For sure. yeah, 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 yeah. And kids, you know, they come with their own like unique set of things, <laughs> like all all the things in all shapes and forms all the things just the so. numbers a lot of energy i mean i almost forgot i mean sometimes i think for those of us who are not in those spaces on a regular basis because even at the college level it's not quite the same the energy yeah i just remember feeling the energy in the hallway it was like wow right that that yeah that youth and yeah the numbers and it's a, and and it's a big yeah. school like i don't you know right. i don't i don't work at a small school Correct. And we're, we're in the middle of like prep for next year, pick your classes, yada, yada, which is a whole process, right? right. And every 9th, 10th, and 11th grader has to have classes for next year. And so, you know, there's like a whole, it's just a lot. <laughs> it's, been a long, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. But you know what? It's Friday right now but it'll be saturday <laughs> when, we, right? when this airs yeah. when this airs and i'll be in the chat even though you'll be wherever however you're getting to cleveland you'll be doing i it. think i'll be literally mid-flight at least i think for almost the entire i think so i think so maybe not Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be there already and I'll be in the chat too. All right. So we'll see. We'll see. People yeah, will be, you know, cool. it'll take it'll take the entire show for a chunk of people to realize it's pre-recorded. <laughs> Especially for those who are late. And right. Then, and of course, shame on them. You know, right. How dare you? <laughs> you know, how dare you? And that's what you get. That's what happens. 
uh, but I am excited for the discussion uh, because, uh, well, at least I, I'm, I'm for, I think I'm for the most part in terms of what was assigned for homework, I'm good. All right, uh, all right. I know there's always more, there's always more on the run sheet. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, always. Um, but is, so. Yeah. So first one shout out to Claudia de la Cruz. She was gonna try and join this week, but that woman is a busy woman. And so we are going to find another time for her to join. It's been, I've been watching a lot of her talks and what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, she's like it's hard. It's hard to be mad given what she's Oh no, not mad at do, all. That's right. right. We were she was gonna join us today and she will join us eventually. But yeah, I mean she's I mean she's about to be president. Right. Right. So it's it's, so, it's a busy busy time for her. Right. So this topic is actually because she could not join <laughs> and because I was like, you know, we should still talk politics anyway, because that wasn't actually what we were going to talk about with her. We were going to talk hair and, and life. But, um, but, you know, I started really thinking about propaganda and mm -hmm. really and truly how it is just weaved into everything. And it's pretty amazing how skillful, <laughs> how skillfully woven into everything it is. And so as we were, you know, mulling about, Jared said to me, have you seen Shirley? And I had not seen Shirley. And I will admit it is very, very difficult for me to get, I'm still not finished watching Shirley because Shirley is, it's, it's rough. It's rough on the, uh, <laughs> it's rough on the sentiments. It's rough on the ears. It's rough on the eyes. It's rough. It's rough. And so, but, um, but it did get me to thinking about, you know, how we are all as black people, as voters, as working people, as all the, you know, the intersectional things that we are being pushed in a multitude of ways to go along with things that are simply not good for us. I mean, very, very, it's very simply put, they're just not good for us. And in a lot of conversations that I am having, and I had one just on Tuesday with a lovely woman who <laughs> was talking to me about, you know, all the concerns. If, if Trump wins again, what are we going to do? And part of the reason that she was having these concerns was because where she works, they've discovered that there is a KKK rally being planned. And so there's been some, you know, some movement at her job to make sure that, you know, the people are safe when this rally is happening. And, you know, she started saying like how crazy it was going to be if Trump was going to win again. And so I had to stop her and say, just real quick, like, you're worrying about Trump winning in November, but you're changing your life for a KKK rally that's about to happen in May <laughs> before Trump wins. And so are you making the connection that you're concerned about Trump, but the thing that's happening right now that you're concerned about is happening under Biden while Biden is in the White House? So you know, you have to really start thinking about what are we, what is it that we're, what are you really so afraid of? Because if you're afraid of the overwhelming racism, it's already happening, right? And that's not to downplay how ridiculous things could continue to get, but simply to make it clear to people that a lot of folks are really afraid of things that are already happening, but they're being propagandized to not really see that this is their current reality already, right? So you, if everybody's being pushed to worry about this thing that can happen down the line, but are you really considering how many of those things that could happen, quote unquote, down the line that are already happening, that are already part of 
like what's going on in your world in the current moment in time. No, it's wild. So, 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 so if I hear you correctly, the argument, it's almost as if they're saying, uh, um, we, we have to vote for Biden because somehow the future Trump is being blamed for the current genocide <laughs> happening under Biden. Right. Did I say that right? I think that's I right. That right. That's right. That's right. So that's wild. That's very difficult to keep up with, Renee. That's, that's it, a, yeah. It's a. It's a. It's yeah. 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 It's it's re- and 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 I I do think that people. I think people have a reason to be like, oh, what's going to happen, right? Like, I don't, mm. I don't want anyone to misunderstand and think that I'm dismissive of how crazy things could get. Because things can always get worse, right? They I can get worse. I 100% co-sign on that. Things always can get worse. But things are pretty bad right now, in my opinion, <laughs> right? And so... What I don't want people, I, what I don't want to have is this focus on this, this future terror while ignoring the current terror. Cause that's, you know, it does, it's not beneficial to anybody. And I think part of the reason that this is happening is because like there, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're literally like playing in our faces. Hiram said it one time, like they played in our faces. Like, and he was right, like they're playing in our faces. And it is mind blowing to me, the things that are happening that are quote unquote, you know, to to work for and, and to entice the black voter. And like, these are the things that we're getting. And like this this is this is what they see is like this is what we got to do to get these people to come out and vote and i'm just i'm i'm flabbergasted by it so before we get to shirley yeah. <laughs> before we get to shirley <laughs> and back at work i don't always catch i don't always catch remix so audience pardon me if this is a conversation that you've already had but These are the couple of things that over time I've been like, this is what the political machine thinks of black people. And this is how the media is supporting this nonsense. So should we start with the gold sneakers or with the rap star? I I mean, obviously it's up to you. I have no problem either way. I mean, it's all, it's, it's hard to, yeah, it's even hard to, to, to 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 plan it out it's hard to 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 project which would flow better into which so right please okay well yeah. let's start with the sneakers let's start with the sneakers all right because oof oof yeah this is this is oh, okay here we go so trump sneakers an effort to connect with black voters wait a minute what i just do there what just happened Okay, Trump sneakers, an effort to connect with black voters. Uh, Last week, the GOP front runner made a surprise visit to SneakerCon in Philadelphia to debut red, blue, and gold gym shoes called Never (laughs) Surrender High Top Sneaker, selling for just a mere $399. (laughs) This... (laughs) <laughs> but this, but the reason for that though, Renee, is that this is <laughs> that these shoes are connecting with Black America because they're into sneakers. They love sneakers. <laughs> this is a big laugh. deal, certainly in the inner cities. I should not laugh. Says says Raymond Arroyo. Uh, Arroyo suge- suggested that Black voters will pivot from the Democratic Party and President Joe Biden because of the new footwear. It's for the people who want Donald Trump brand sneakers. That against he's that against he's connecting on a different level. Lordy. So didn't he? So wait, Biden offered his own. Is this the link to the shoes? Because didn't Biden put out his own shoe? No, did he really? Stop playing. With I, think me. He no, he I think no. he did. I think he did. I think he did. No. Um, 
Donald Trump showing up to hawk bootleg off whites is the closet, is the closest he'll get to any Air Force Ones ever again for the rest of his life, Michael T- Tyler, the campaign's communication director, said in the statement. Oh, that's mm-hmm. Biden's communications director. Mm-hmm. I'm, let me, let me, let me. The nearly four hundred dollars sneakers were released the day after a judge ordered Trump to, in his namesake company, to pay four hundred and fifty three million in a New York real estate fraud lawsuit. So I guess he can try to. Let me just see real quick. Um, oh, I, I mean, I, I could have sworn I saw, I can't even handle that. If that's the reality that <laughs> instead of, nah, instead of, I must have been wrong. Okay. Cause I'm like, if instead of addressing any of the issues, the response was, let me also release a pair of sneakers. I might. Yeah. I must, I must, I must be okay. tripping. I'm tripping. And thankfully we don't have the chat here. And, and maybe, unfortunately we don't have the chat right now to catch me and correct me on this live. But, yeah. but I mean, this, like, this is really the fact that anybody even said out loud, like gold sneakers are the way to get black people to the ballot and on your side. And red, like, white, and blue, you know, I mean, the, you know, and I, I'm just going to pull the, the, the picture back up real quick. So we make sure just in case, like this is, you know, you, get, just, the, you get the gold with the flag on it. I mean, I this, just, is, this is, I just have don't, low top versions too. Oh, oh Lord. I just don't even, I don't even understand how, like, how did that become how did that become a thing? Like, who sat down and said, this is what we're going to do? We're going to make high tops. And that's going to be, like, that's going to be the turning point of this election. It's going to be the high top. You know, I wouldn't, I wonder, I don't know exactly who Trump's been hanging out with lately, but I wonder to what extent that that any of uh of a you know a variety of the black community has been hanging out with him if this hasn't been something that got like i could see this coming up in the middle of some drug or liquor <laughs> rat riddled late night gather you know the, you know the cigars are out there joking and somebody says something stupid about sneakers or sneaker culture or or what are you wearing right you know uh, I don't know, but and then this gets twisted into some some somebody on his team saying, you know what, this is, and from their perspective, this is a legit way to connect with some right. young uh, black voters. This is gonna this is gonna be right. something. Um, and and I probably if the week hadn't been crazy, I might have driven myself nuts enough to pull up some of the some of the reels with the sneakers, but I just, I can't, I. I mean, it's obviously a huge huge industry. It's obviously something that has been uh, popularized as part of hip hop and so on and all that, whatever, whatever. Uh, And then it's also been something that if they wanted to do something serious with it, they could have looked into the, uh, uh, the way that, that, um, well, I was thinking really of what Fanon said about the colonized, that 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 it's it, instead of people being chastised for spending too much on what would be seen as some frivolous item, people are encouraged to buy what is available to them. He said that, that the colonized buy the, the colonial trinkets that are available. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, so so on the one hand, there is this sneaker culture, there is this industry that's been built up this there is this the, the new hype around the, the Jordan film. And, you know, uh, the, the all the discussion in the LeBron versus Jordan beef, the fact that Jordan, even after all these years of retirement, his shoe still is, is selling like $130 billion a year or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, there, so I could all of that to say instead of doing something that you know talking about it or raising it as an issue that could be talked about in terms of of a critique of the political economy and society uh and even the violence that's inspired uh and encouraged as a result of it all this is the way 
it's it said no we'll just we'll just put on we'll, we'll do a shiny shoe with red black and green uh, red, red black and green no, <laughs> red, red white and blue and and uh uh, and this is how we this is how we want to deal with black people. This is right. the way this, this is, is how we're going to entice way them. We would want to. That's right. We're going to entice them. That's right. And it's and you know this. I think the saddest part for me is that there is an actual media discussion about whether or not it's going to work. Right. Like part of part of the discussion in this article is the fact that. A Fox person, like a Fox News broadcast or whatever, was like, "This is this is it. This is the way, right?" And not that I ever take anyone on Fox that seriously, but like that this is even a conversation, right? That it wasn't offhand, like dismissed as, "Look how, like this is ridiculous. We're not even having this conversation about sneakers being the path to electoral politics and support." from black voters. Like we're not even gonna acknowledge this as a thing. Instead, it actually became like headline news. Like, look, Trump is trying to reach the black people by presenting $400 sneakers. And that's, you know, he thinks this is gonna be the way. And it's, it's, I don't know if I even have a word for it. I really, I like, I, 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 I don't know if I have a word for it. I really don't. It's a mess. We'll just leave it, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. It's, it's a mess. mess. It is um, equally as messy as <laughs> doing a rap. Yeah. I um, listen <clears throat> and see. You're 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 the music person. So. <laughs> and this is this is the this is the the RFK one, right? This is what you're talking about here. That's. Is yes, that the one you're talking that's, about. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. one, and I I have not listened to the song. I have no intentions of listening to the song. I I, I don't. Drummer boy taps Boosie badass and Hot Boy Turk to support RFK Jr. campaign. Yeah, I don't. Is the song linked in here? And probably I don't know. It's on Apple I Music. I met RFK though. Jr. through who's Angela Stanton King and open table lunch and we put together the producer explain we were able to speak on different issues. I mentioned to Angela at the dinner that I could put together a song speaking on some of these issues. She hit me back a few days later and said, let's do it. Is this it right here? Standing on business? That that's business? it. Sorry. Business. That's it. Oh. I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You don't have to believe the lies. You don't have to take sides. You can help me heal the divide. As president of the United States, I'll be standing on business and helping the community. Hey, yeah, boy. That boy can't hey, yeah. Community servo. Welcome mm -hmm. not what's the purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm standing on business. Yeah. That's why I'm standing on business, yeah. They truly don't Need it to be a safer place to stay for you and me. If I'm that child role model, start using me. We need real teachers who don't mind schooling deep. The child who don't know what he wanna, what he wanna be. Need to bring the churches in and help him find G.O.D. Last president, the people didn't respect when he speak. Gave all that money for walls, but he forgot about the street. If you see somebody hungry, try to get them something to eat. If you see somebody lonely, you should try to be their peace. Southern hospitality, tell people that you love them. And that gon' make a better sister and better brother. We all got a purpose and you find it when you struggle. Can't worry about who ain't with us. We got each other. We black and beautiful. Question is, do they deserve us? Looking for change in a community to serve us. Boost. <laughs> I'm I mean, I'm not mad at the flow. I'm not mad at the 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 the, the, the verse. I'm just I'm just disappointed it's in service of this. Uh, but also and, uh, yeah. <laughs> How, oh, Lord. How on earth are you rapping with someone who is okay with blowing up Gaza and talking about oh. war? But, but. That has nothing to do with that.
you, <laughs> what that got to do with this? <laughs> you, you you doing too much now, Renee. What are you, what are you doing? Oh, real quick, I had forgot. I do remember uh, now. I remember real quick who Angela Stanton King is, an American author, television personality, conservative speaker based in Atlanta, Georgia. She spent two years in prison for conspiracy and was later pardoned by President Donald Trump a decade after serving her sentence. Mm. So, uh, mm. on, on, she's standing on business too, I guess. I, I mean, for real, they just mess with you. They just, they, they just mess with all But of I know us. that's, and I'm sorry. Right. Cause that remember, right. That's the overall point here. How, how are those, that was this ruling class looking to reach and manipulate uh through the electoral process uh and sneakers it's, and rap it's music shady sneakers <laughs> rap music netflix movies it's, oh it's it's awful it's man. a lot it's, it's a lot it's a lot it's it's really bad it's um, really bad and i did have i have had students ask me uh uh about rfk jr Mm-hmm. Um, not about this in this one yet, at least not yet, but it, when in that, you know, that killer Mike discussion that he had, they saw mm-hmm. at least some of them saw some of that. And I, I want to, I want the standard to be raised, but I, I will admit that I am sympathetic to the confusion they bring into the classroom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to be at least sympathetic. I mean, how, like when this is what you are provided, this is the information that you were bombarded with, right? As I was searching for a decent article about the song, I came across an article about him and killer Mike and he was going to add, and it's it's on that same line that he was something about, he considered asking him to be VP. And imagine that. And I thought to myself, like how, like, I guess he asked him about the VP. Correct. Let me correct myself. Um, I said the wrong word, but even like, why is, why is killer Mike the the person that you are going to to ask this question like how did that happen how did that happen in my mind i see the direct line from and especially since we're we're at least recording this the day after the 56th assassin 56th anniversary of the assassination of dr king mm-hmm I do see a direct line from COINTELPRO targeting King. King is assassinated. Andy Young rises to prominence in the wake of that assassination when we know King had chastised him as being a capitalist, where King said he was not, and in, in drawing a distinction between the two. And then, as Killer Mike has said repeatedly, he is from the Andy Young tree, as he put it, of civil rights. So mm-hmm. I do see a direct line to in terms of how they got there. The people and the, the representatives of a movement in politics that would have been there to negate appropriately Killer Mike and Andy Young have been taken out. Right. And we're still in the in the wake of that too. And until we replenish these movements and efforts and leadership, uh, this is what we get. And then here comes Killer Mike to link up with RFK. And of course, RFK, what is Killer Mike? One of maybe two black people he talks to on any maybe semi-regular basis or more than once. Right. I'm guessing. I'm just guessing. Forgive the speculation. (laughs) Because I'm thinking if you knew, if you had access to as much resources as Kennedy, then you would have uh, infinite access to the breadth of of Black thought. And with all due respect to Killer Mike, I think there are others he could have tapped if he needed a Black running mate. That could do or a little even, bit or, better if your advice, politics were more advanced. Or yeah. advice on yeah. on who, you know what I mean? And and then the person he ended up 
picking eventually Somebody to represent young people yeah. right right the philanthropist right and i dug around on her her companies her organization's website to see what they were about and um you know of course they're behind the movies and and it's all more more stuff right and then i was i was like oh no because the movie have mercy is on the list of movies that her organization is behind and brian stevenson who you know for me is i i mean i i truly respect what brian stevenson does right and i read the book and the book of course is way better than the movie was because the movie just focused on the one storyline and jd fox and you know but there was so much more to all that that brian stevenson had been doing and has been doing since he entered you know the legal world and you know but like all movies like <laughs> it's like this constant barrage of these like media extravaganzas where where they you know they give you i said have mercy then just mercy apologies um you know where they they give you like this this storyline that you know i i just <sighs> i don't know what we're gonna do like you know i don't know i don't know what we're gonna do i don't know how we're going to get people to really understand that everything that they are being provided, whether it be entertainment, documentaries, docudramas, reality TV, like whatever, like it's all for the purpose of keeping people trapped within this system that exists solely for them not to thrive. And I'm I'm really at a crossroads with this. Like I am struggling <laughs> with this. So since we're on to movies, I guess we should we should bust it out. But <laughs> so I mean. yeah. Uh, just so let's see, I'll pull this up here. Um, What I was going to say is we can play the trailer now and it will air, obviously, when this this episode airs. Uh, did we play it already? I, we can not, play it. I don't think so. We, did we? So, well, let me no. Let me just do this. What, what, well, let me just what we'll do is we'll play it. And then I'll I'm, what I want to say is and leave it on the recording is that once we take it out so that we don't get a copyright uh, or we don't get, you know, um, uh, whatever we're going to get. Re when, even when though it, this is even though it's the trailer on YouTube, you can't play that. either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We we just I've been I've been having this issue for on all over the place. Oh, that's so wild. it'll get not it won't be it won't be serious. It it just demonetizes the video and then it it depends it depends on what trailer it is. It will and who owns it. It will uh, block it in certain countries. Uh, so so what I'm just gonna say is we'll let it run here. Because of course, those who who show up as the the live faithful deserve the full. But but when it you know when clips come out or whenever if it gets edited out later so that we can keep the video online, just so you'll know, we have watched the trailer. So if you want to pause the show now <laughs> and then come back after you watch the trailer on whatever site will allow you, and then come back and see what we say about it, just so we're on the same page. I figured I would try it this way uh, in advance. <laughs> there we go, that helps, there we go. You know, there we so, go. Um, but yeah, and, and with that, I will, let's let's take a look at this, because this is some wild, and and I don't know, trigger warnings of some sort, politically maybe, you know, sensibilities. Yeah, maybe, sure, know, sure. All, all the warnings, all the warnings. All <laughs> Yo, what are we going to 
going to do, man? Like, what, how do you, what are we going to do? I, I really, like, sincerely, what are we going to do? Like, how, how, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do this? How are we going to break this mess? Because this is a mess. If I answer, I, I, to be perfectly honest, the the most honest answer would fully get us removed from YouTube. Uh, but what I, I, what I have always thought about, what I've always loved about uh, the, I hate to say it this way, but but I know how it sounds. But what I've always liked about my my work when I mix what I like, the mixtape manifesto, is that it was advocating for the Russell Maroon Schultz definition of the opposite of violence in a media context, specifically because of this and that question you just asked and it being connected to the political apparatus, which then imposes on us the, the sole solution of electoral politics. Right. So I know that didn't, that was a little bit circuitous, <laughs> but I, I, it, it It's rough. It's rough. And okay, so let me make this very clear. Just, I have not yet finished watching. <laughs> sure. I'm having a really hard time getting through Shirley. And it saddened me. It saddens me greatly because I really like Regina King. <laughs> right. And, and, and normally, even though I clearly understand how much propaganda all of it is i still like regina king because my know. former colleague is in the movie I, I one of my one of my favorite work homeboys was in the movie <laughs> i did I, and i just t tweeted at him earlier I'll, I'll come to that when we get to the to the, to the to the discussion but my point in bringing it up now is that I, that's the pro i get it that's why i argue for the vernon philosophy and why we talk about this that that it's going to get better we're going to see people that we know, that we mm -hmm. like from afar, that are mm -hmm. very talented, that we appreciate. It's going to be well I'm bopping my head watching the trailer. The music is dope. The, it looks good. The sound is beautiful. And the content is just disastrous. It's a mess, man. It's a mess. So it's not personal. I mean, we, you know, uh, uh, as we were talking off air, we got people connected to these things all over the place that that it's not personal. Love you to death. But but we we are forced the way I prefer to look at it, because when it gets personal, I got to put it this way even more so we are forced into these contradictions by the setting we're in. Right. Uh, and that's what is is it's it's becoming more frustrating, I admit, because they're getting better at it it's it's um and if you don't pay attention if you don't know any better or if you are already pre politically predisposed to appreciate it i mean it's just beautiful it's just it's just you know 90 minutes two hours or so or whatever of just bliss right and then you and then you get barb well you haven't well i don't want to spoil it i guess no I you can now spoil it, it i mean you, i'm i'm gonna finish I mean, watching it but it's just it's it's but my very, point is if you hard. love barbara lee right you get a Barbara Lee biopic on the side mm. and with her closing it out in okay. real in real life, Barbara Lee closing it out. Uh, you get a good McDonald's commercial. This oh. is one brilliant literally I mean, a McDonald's commercial. Literally a McDonald's commercial. I mean, from the start, from the, the first scene, I don't know if you even caught it. She is drinking a McDonald's yeah. drink, walking up to the steps to take yes. her first picture as a congressperson. Like, and and I watched it and I thought to myself, was that a McDonald's cup? And then there goes another McDonald's. And, and then if you thought if you McDonald's. were confused, it came right back. Exactly. Came right back. And I was like, so we just we just selling McDonald's now using Surely My kids get mad at me. I've messed them up. I've successfully messed them up. They don't miss a product placement at all anymore. 
good uh yeah i'm like you want if, if, if you know and they're like and of all things mcdonald's mm-hmm. mcdonald's oh which for for a certain particularly i don't know how it works anymore but for certainly my generation mcdonald's they used to talk about proudly was the number one employer in the black community mm-hmm. they talked about how mcdonald it was it was like a it was a all those commercials about how calvin from the hood who started oh, on fries is now a manager do you remember right, calvin? calvin you remember calvin i yeah. do remember calvin so I mcdonald's do. has a really long and they did all those dr king comm- commemorations yep. Yeah, and then here they are giving us Shirley. I'm like, this is crazy. It's right. crazy. So even and again from the 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 media analysis part, it's it's the technology doesn't change the relationship. So the new advanced capability just brings all that old stuff right here to it. Uh, so we get we get Calvin. We don't need Calvin. We got it more more subtly and 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 beautifully provided to us in in the in the context of a, a netflix biopic i mean it's wild it's wild and i really you know <laughs> i just i keep having these same conversations about the democratic party and the vote blow, vote blue no matter who and the or you have to support Biden and then it circles back to, well, it's too important to, you know, to risk third parties. And, you know, and then, you know, you look at some of these third party people singing rap songs and you have to wonder like, <laughs> like what, what is going on. And it's this entire movie, I've gotten through the first, I think hour and 15 minutes now at this point. And if I was not a person who was who was really clued in on how bad the duopoly is and how sunk in the Democratic Party is with the Republicans and how they're literally two cheeks on the same ass as has been <laughs> has been stated, right? Like I would be like, oh, like she fought from within, right? The sister comes to her to find out, like, what? How did? What do I do? And her first question is, "What are you registered to vote? You have to vote." And that's Barbara Lee. That's who becomes Barbara Lee. Well, she is Barbara Lee. That's the character. That's her. She's Barbara Lee. That's her. That's why I'm saying you get, you get the Barbara her. Lee story. Oh. You get her. You get the side oh. biopic, and it's beautiful. I wrote it down here she, because she comes at her, and then she comes at, and of course Barbara has the afro, right? So she's the stereotypical panther. She comes at the or the or the black radical. She comes in there talking about uh, all the stuff we start with. The vote don't do anything. Right. It's two cheeks of the same ass or something parallel to that is what she's saying. And then what we and then what we get is the same the, the same condescension where she said uh uh Shirley says don't just be a a yeller and a screamer mm-hmm. standing outside and then and then Barbara calms down for a second and she says come and work for me and then I wrote down here she's co-opted. Mhm. So I said, so as I told a friend of mine, uh, 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 I, what did I say? I, I wrote that uh, the point was I was like, th- we get to see how um, Shirley stole Bar- Barbara from the revolution. <laughs> that's what I wrote. <laughs> and that's what we see. And, and so that scene, and of course, when the movie ends with Barbara Lee, who for many is the most radical political figure that they've seen, certainly in 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 mainstream politics, uh, or anywhere for for some, uh, that would be their standard bearer, uh, with her one vote against the Iraq War or whatever, you know, like right. that was like, you know, that but but what that is becomes symbolic of, if not, it's just sort of an overt message saying put down the radicalism and become Barbara Lee. You don't need to be Asada. You don't need to be Sophia Bakari. You don't need to be Renee. You don't need any of that. You just, you need to put all that down. Don't be a yeller and a screamer. Come on in and then have a nice career and you get to close out a biopic about Shirley. Uh, I mean, it was, 
It was just <laughs> right. remarkable. It is. It's remarkable. It really is. And and you know, I I can I have I have a book that she wrote that I have not read yet. And but I also know that I mean that's not all that there was to her, right? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, like you picked everything that you could pick out of her life to completely nullify anything that bucked the system. Because even the things that she did to buck the system, it was all, it's all while trying to like maneuver within, right? Like, it's just, it's crazy. And, and I got, show, sorry, no, go ahead. Go ahead. no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just, they show it in the preview. Basically, you get what you see in that part of the preview where where she says, where they say, but you're a black and you're a woman. And she says, um, no, they no, they no, they say you're the line where they say you're going to you're you're just a politician. And she says, do I look like any other politician? Right. And that's the point. No, you don't. But you but you end up at least in this right. movie. Mm -hmm. You embody all the same. You are just another politician. And right. then and then when she's done dirty, which is what the film concludes with by the Democratic Party and particularly the black men mm -hmm. within the Democratic Party, they become the villains that 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 uh, uh, we're not left with the critique of that's because the Democratic Party is that's what right. it does. Right. We're left with the black men within the Democratic Party. At least that's what I took. That the, the it was it was Ron Dellums, it was Walter Fauntleroy that uh, they they abandoned you at the moment that you could have. Right. And it was almost like, well, wow, wow, the racists are gone. Like, you know, <laughs> like the white rulers of the party have disappeared because we see them at the beginning. Right. We have that one scene where the white old white congressman is standing there giving her a hard time. Right, because she's making the same amount of money as he is. Right, right. But by the end of the film, and you could look, when you finish it, I'm happy. Or if anybody wants to correct me on this, please. But by the end of the film, they're gone. They're gone. She goes to visit George Wallace. Yeah. She's, I, she's yeah. hanging with, you know. The, right. but, so the racist, but certainly the racist within the party that would have been holding her back, they're gone. And it's Dellums and Fauntleroy mm -hmm. who, and I felt the kind of way, I admit it biasly, because Fauntleroy eulogized my father. Uh, so it was, it was weird to think of what that might have meant about my father's politics. I got, mm -hmm. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to mm -hmm. front. No disrespect. But I was like, Oh no, I don't want to see Fauntleroy in this, looking like <laughs> this. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but it was. It's so. crazy. And it's, and it's, it really is, it is very well done. And if, if you watch it because you're seeking to be entertained by a movie, right? And you don't understand that the price you pay for your entertainment is propaganda. That's the price you're paying. Like you're being entertained, but you can't help. You can't help while you're being entertained, but to hear all of those hidden messages, right? So the price you pay is that you, you have to either take in those messages or you have to literally watch it and spend the whole time fighting that contradiction in your head of knowing they're trying to tell you this thing, but don't, ah, 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 don't forget, <laughs> right? Don't forget, don't forget that, you know, when all is said and done, if you are a black person who holds to the revolutionary, you're gonna end up in a box because that's what this, that's what happens. That's mm. the end result. Right. So you can go ahead and you can you can you can go play revolutionary if you want to. And you can you know, you can go and, and speak truth and try and rile the people up and make them screamers and, you know, do the whole thing. But none of those people are here anymore. And why is that? 
or you can participate in the system and maybe they'll make a documentary about you. <laughs> maybe you'll be the next one to be on Netflix with your, your life story. Maybe you'll be the next one on that Netflix screen. Right. And that's a high price to pay, right? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a high price to pay to actually have to like give, like really have to confront those contradictions as you are watching something that has been put out there as, as entertainment under the guise of teaching you about a historical figure that was actually relatively important to black people. Right. So it, I mean, it's, I, I was really, I'm having such a hard time. I don't even know if I can bring myself to watch the Bob Marley movie. Oh, I, well, I just, I, I don't, I don't encourage you to do that. It I was, don't, I don't trash. know. And, 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 you know, my, my mother would be bad. She's tried like three times to watch it and she has fallen asleep each time. And now she's just given up. She's not going to try she anymore. Just, she should just, so it's, it's a good thing. She should, if, if, if we've ever encouraged going to sleep and not being woke, pun intended, that's a good time. <laughs> I just, cool. but it's all these things and it just comes at you. It is a constant barrage of these really well done, creative, all the things. And it is just laden with nothing but, but poison. So there were a couple of, speaking of that, so I noted a couple of things also that you get the, what I wrote down the original version of I'm not your candidate, where remember where Obama came in and said, look, I can't, I'm not just the president of black America. Uh, I'm the president of all America. Mm -hmm. And she had to do a version of that. So on the one right. hand, she's saying, I want to be the first woman. I'm happy to be the black woman who's representing all of these groups and that groups and this group and that group. But when it comes to getting elected, she stands up and she says on camera, I'm not here for black people. I'm not here for women. Mm -hmm. I'm here for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, so there we go. We got the origins of that. There was also the, uh, what was, oh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, where is it? We, oh, um, Oh, I did the yell or the screamer. We get the, oh, I thought there was another one that she did. There was another, where the part where, where I, I forgot, was it Terrence Ho Howard's character or the other one um, where he says, uh, um, thank you for making us believe. Mm -hmm. That's Terrence, what that matters. was Terrence Howard. Mm -hmm. That's what matters, he said. Yep. Um, I thought there was another one of those particular phrases that I thought that they, that I saw like a, like a, uh, but any, okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe I, but, but yeah, so we get that. We get the other thing real quick, if I can, there was something where she, where, where that was really bothered by, which was her engagement or disengagement with the Gary, uh, the conference, the, the 1972 mm -hmm. Gary, Indiana black power conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is true. They mentioned this in the film and it is true. Cause I happen to have been, and I'll share it here real quick because I went and found the, a digital version of it. But but in the early 2000s, I was part of an organization called Organization Organized Coup. And we um, uh, modeled our document, our founding document on the Gary Pro Proclamation uh and found it very useful that yes the it was it was condemnable in terms of the lack of women being involved it was condemnable based on some of the more conservative politics that were involved but the the document that it actually produced was i think a very structurally at least a, a nice frame to uh approach various elements of the struggle so shout out to my godfather, Mr. Tom Porter, who put us in touch with Amiri Baraka, who I believe at the time was one of the few, if not the only still living members. And we sort of got his uh, blessing and then we just sort of followed their trajectory. So so, um, so I, I just wanted to bring that up to say that, that the conference wasn't as useless 
as it seemed to be depicted in the film, although it did show, I think, interestingly, uh, her struggle with uh, the, her relationship with, with Black liberation, which right. is what we saw at least in a little bit in the preview with her meeting with Huey Newton, who right. again is is somewhat lampooned and they meet at Diane Carroll's house and he's just kind of looking, you know, it's really kind of a, he's immature and radical. She's practical, mature, responsible mm -hmm. and wins the day, so to speak. Uh, right. But, um, and then just quickly, I just want to do shout out my man, Marcellus Baseman Shepard, who, who is in a scene, you see him introducing her and uh, uh at a convention and and uh, uh you'll notice the voice there's a very deep voice and uh, we got to I, he was you know a colleague of mine at morgan state he worked at weaa for many years uh and i don't want to put this on him but i feel like he was forced <laughs> out by the same man that forced me out as a school of communication so it's like we all got to kind of got forced out you know but uh good brother and it was good to see him pop up in that in in, in that role so um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, oh yeah, I, I made a note that Terrence Howard's character was, the, he got the most angry and ready to fight when, when in defense of the white boy, which I thought was <laughs> right. <funny. laughs> I said, so now you're ready to swing on somebody because the little uh, white kid is upset. He's, in a, he's, he's getting attacked or whatever. Oh, uh, I um, just, and yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you caught a lot of the things that I've noted. And so, uh, warning to, to all the, the Oh, that's what it was. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. go, go, go. I found it. It was in my Walter Faulkneroy note that, because I, I got stuck on that he eulogized my father, but he's in the film, he's used to, to offer us. So, we, like I said, we got the I'm not your candidate trope. And then we got again from Fauntleroy the explanation of why we have to defend the lesser of two evils mm -hmm. and why in that moment Nixon has to be stopped. You mm -hmm. know, look at, and if you're not watching it with a certain lens, you're like, see, that's why we got to vote for Biden again, where right. I think we should be seeing it as, see, that's why we should abandon this whole thing because we're in the same cycle 50 right. years later, they're saying right. the same shit. So, right. okay. And, right. that, yeah. and that part is important, right? Because it's it is a, a I mean it really is well done it is a well done version of look even then we were we were having this struggle with the Democratic Party and the way to do it is to get in there and fight from within that's the way and we're not gonna pay attention to the fact that in the end she got done dirty <laughs> we just gonna we just gonna we gonna don't worry about all of that Worry about all the stuff she did and how hard she fought. To be Message. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> it was like I just is it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. And then so but <laughs> and that's why they give us Barbara Lee at the end. By right. the way, it's right like a nice because you have to you, yeah, right you have to yeah. show like look 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 the the it continues right. And then who I who, who when when it's Barbara Lee's movie, we'll see who she, you know, who who the person is that she grooms to take her place. Oh wow. Right. And oh wow. Right, because it's a continuation. It is, I mean, it is literally oh, wow. rinse, rinse, cycle, repeat. Like literal. And there is always someone to be uplifted to replace to say, see, and this person's continuing the work. So now you can go look at how, how, how they're continuing the work from within the Democratic Party and, and, and fighting the fight. And, and it's, it's just to suck you in completely. Yeah. Um, just, I don't know how much more on this you had. There was just one more piece to this. If you and I got, I no, yes. And I have, I have, I have something else, but go, you okay, go no, first. we can go to yours. No, I mean, tell, what did you want to get to? <laughs> so this, I thought of Diallo. <laughs> oh no. So often. And I Not was a like, Diallo reference. listen, her relationship with religion 
at Christianity mm. and how she had to go see him in the hospital because that's what Christians do. And this oh, that's whole, right. I mean, she was guided by God. Like You're talking this, about George Wallace. She had to go see yes, George Wallace. Yes. Segregation now, segregated for... And it, right. I did, to be fair, they, they at least let viewers know that a lot of black people were not happy with that. True. But then to your point, they, they have their explanation. Right. And even before, I don't know if you caught this, but in her conversation with, with Barbara Lee, when she says she doesn't want to go to, to, to Gary and, and she's like, no, I'll go and I'll represent you. And she brings her into her office and she says to her, like, what are you so afraid of? And she like goes to snap at her and she was like, it almost made me lose my religion. <laughs> Right. And the response was, well, this is why I can't be in politics because I can't lose my religion. Right. I don't think I caught that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't catch that. Right. And so this consistent reference to religion and God and Christianity and being guided by these things that all I thought to myself was <laughs> we should have told Diallo to come on so his head could explode <laughs> while we're having this conversation, because this is why. I don't like for for all the teasing I do and oh, I just, you know, he he's so whatever with it and all my he's not wrong about how misguided black people are via religion. He's not wrong. And it was just one more. It was like one more thing that they just kept recycling and replaying throughout the movie like don't forget god don't forget your christianity don't forget to be a person of yeah, god wow. I, had to, I'm, I'm I can't believe you missed that yeah, <laughs> i I'm, can't I'm, believe i can't believe you didn't i i was like wait this ain't on his list it's not it's not i that's that's very that's deep that's and it's and, and I'm, I'm i admit it's a little spooky to me right now i'm a little i'm a little concerned for myself <laughs> right now <laughs> that you didn't I'm trying to look at my notes again. Did I miss it? Did I scribble it down? No, I don't have it. Right. I did not. I did not get it. Right. And so I just, I was, I was floored, and I really, I honestly, I had, I had a Diallo moment where I was like, oh, this is the problem with religion and black people. This is the problem. Oh, I hope I'm in the chat when this airs. And and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to say it tomorrow. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to admit it. But it was crazy. It really was. And I was like, it's just one more thing. Like this, you know, you gotta make sure that you're always doing the thing that's gonna, you know, highlight how close you are to God. And we're not gonna worry about all all the other things. Don't worry about all the other things. All the other things. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um, well, just to add a little bit to that madness, I'm so disappointed in myself. Right now. You, just, <laughs> you, just, you just messed up my whole... Uh, one of the things I did notice is that on the IMDb of the... Or on the Wikipedia or whatever of the uh, film, you see that participant media is a producer of the film. So we know it comes out on Netflix. Right. But I couldn't help but I, when I looked into this, I noticed that participant media is, you get to see Al Gore, participant mm -hmm. stands for commitment and passion for making the world a better place through experiences that fill people's minds and hearts and motivates them to be that change. Mm -hmm. And so it's talking about activism and changing the world and what participant media is an offshoot of is whoops is the skull foundation which is an, um maybe i guess not the worst uh uh da, 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 where am i looking for here about no okay that was it so then i gotta come down here and then you see you know it's the skull foundation hmm. jeff skull and what what you know, a philanthropist, social entrepreneur, um, multi-billionaire. And uh, so really what I'm just saying is even if he, let's just say he isn't, if he isn't at the right wing of the ruling elite, 
uh, maybe he's on the left wing or maybe he's quote unquote, not as bad or whatever it is. The point for me is still that we're, we're having, we're relying on multi-billionaires through their philanthropy to provide us with the, with the backing and the green lighting of films that are supposed to tell us about not only just black history, just generally, but black activist history and radical history and, and right. the history of struggle and right. what changes it. So that it's on a website where Al Gore is, de, is, is, is sort of the frame of what change is. And so even to your point about the, 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 the do, do, I don't even know if I can say Craig, the do op exit. <laughs> It's the DWAP exit or whatever it is. I mean, we're talking about somebody who should have been president, and I don't want to get us another strike by talking about a certain voting cycle. <laughs> right. But, I mean, you know, somebody who comes, you know, this is the Clinton, this is, you know, the Clinton, Obama, Biden, Democratic National Committee, Democratic Leadership Council, this is the this is who's giving us our history and then to your point and I, i'll stop is is regina king is great right terrence howard was great i thought terrence right. howard, you know when he you're not talking so about lunatic know. science and math and claiming you found <laughs> new particles or whatever the hell he's talking about he's great oh man <laughs> oh <laughs> oh it's bad man like it's bad and this is what we get this is what we get this is this is our beacon like this is this is who you should be like this is who you have to strive to be and then any storyline that even comes close to trying to be about someone who was an actual revolutionary like you get the wildest version of that person humanly possible. Like you, 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 you tell a story about Fred Hampton, but it's not really about Fred Hampton. It's actually about the FBI person. And who that's was, who's giving us this movie too, right? Right. right? Like it, it's actually about the FBI person who was working against Fred Hampton. So that way we don't really have to talk about the politics of Fred Hampton. We don't have to talk about all the things that he does. We don't have to talk about his brilliance. We don't have to talk about how as a teenager, he was bucking the system, right? And we also, you know, we can just gloss over that it got him, it got him unalived, right? Don't forget that lesson because these are your options. You can play nice in the system, right? And you can become, you know, the, the headline and the story for, for Netflix, or you can attempt to break the system, but what you're going to get is you're going to be the co-star in the movie that's about you. And in the end, they're going to gloss over the fact that the reason that you are no longer here to give your voice is because the system made sure that you were removed. Wow. Yeah, and then John Ridley, who's the writer director of this, gave us Twelve Years a Slave. The the people that gave us that film. I mean, this is it's just a beautiful. I mean, we yeah. It's the alarm you're ringing is is yeah yeah. It's beautifully awful, beautifully awful, and and we really we need to we need to and. And it's annoying to be that person who is always having these conversations with people. But, I mean, you just have to do it, right? Like, you just have to, you just have to do it. You just can't, like, you can't, like, I'm not going to have a conversation with you about this movie and pretend like it was just such a great movie and I'm not going to bring up all the contradictions so that you can at least think for a second that you know the price that you paid for your entertainment was to give up all of your common sense mm. with regard to this system mm. right mm. i mean it's it's wild and so people have to be willing to to annoy other people and to piss people off right and i do it all the time like i mean 
my coworkers, they, I, I, I do think they love me, but they also think I'm a nut because I'm always on about something, <laughs> right? Like always. They bring coffee in from the wrong place and I'm like, why are you still giving them baby killers your money? <laughs> and I say it like that and they'd be like, Renee, Renee, right? But you, but really, even with my reaction, no, you, you did that. Right. Like, don't, don't Renee me. You, you supported the, the baby killers. Right. And we all live in our contradictions, right? Because I shop at Whole Foods. I do. It's the Amazon store. I know. But I, like, I, it's hard to find a place where I'm going to get that selection of food that I feel like is healthy to eat in my house. I think, I think it's, it's, on the one hand, it, it's possible to to do better. Uh, on the other hand, I think that if we traced all of the things we buy back to its ownership, it would yeah. be very <laughs> difficult to avoid. You're gonna be mad one way or another, yeah. Somebody, but uh, um, so yeah, I, I mean, because we're trapped. We're also simultaneously trapped in this system where in order to live you have to come i mean i guess you don't have to comply with some rules like you could go live off the grid but even that like i wonder how much of that is really not still <laughs> like are you really really free from the system i don't know i don't live off the grid so i can't i can't say for certain right but you're always in some ways trapped by the constraints of this system because you want to live, right? You want to eat. You don't want to sleep outside. You want to, you know, have, be able to watch movies on Netflix, right? So you have a TV, you have your phone, you have, you know, all these things. And like, I have arguments and let, let me not say arguments, but I, you know, I have discussions with people who I love very much. And they're like, you know, part of this is like you're living the contradiction, right? You live in a house, you have a job, you have, you know, healthcare, you, you know, you have your iPhone, you you have a MacBook, like you have all these things that are all part of this system that you say you want to break, but you're still utilizing all the things that are within the system. And that's the contradiction that I have to live with. But at the same time, I feel like at the least, since I have to live with these contradictions, at the least, I can speak up about the things that are so egregious that people shouldn't just go along with it. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so listen, I, I, unfortunately, again, this is my fault. I got less than 30 minutes before I do have to leave. And I want to yeah. make sure that we get to anything from your run sheet. And then I also did want to ask you, I don't know if, I don't actually know if it's on the run sheet or part of the plan, but the, the, the panel you sent. Oh, um, I should have put that on. Yes. Yes. We, we I'm can very talk about interested. That. Yeah. I'm very interested if you would talk a little bit about that. And, and at some point I, I, I was even thinking maybe we should invite some of them around here. Um, Works for me. But it was a, 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 an appropriately left discussion about how to approach electoral politics. So I don't mm -hmm. if you, I don't even actually. I don't do you have still it have in front of me? But do you have? Look, uh, all right, let me. Can you try and get it up? Or I can get the link. But okay. uh, um, yeah, I have the link. Here we go. Here we go. Um, overcoming the democratic party for black liberation. And then I don't, I, I obviously there's no timestamps prepared, but I'll just at least show this and we can share the link where you were one of the panelists. Uh, and uh, from the poor people's army, uh, mm -hmm. we should, you know what, let's get BPM subscribed. Um, and uh, I thought it was a fascinating discussion. And I will admit, I don't know Beyond the Poor People's Army and Sherry Honkala, uh, I don't know anything about a lot of the folks involved or the, mm -hmm. the work that they're doing, but I was fascinated and at minimum inspired. Uh, but yeah, could, did you want to? Yeah, so yeah. so one of the, 
80,000 things that I do is I am the Green Party New Jersey representative for the Second Rainbow Coalition. We are a coalition of groups who are based off of off the, the works of the original Rainbow Coalition and, you know, we read, we read the statement at the start of every meeting. And um, the, P, the Poor People's Army is one of the other organizations that are part of the Second Rainbow Coalition. And um, I got, you know, a request, like, would you, would you sit on this panel and have this conversation about, you know, really, how do we encourage Black folks to understand that the Democratic Party is not on their side? And how do we have that real conversation about the downfalls and the pitfalls of remaining within a political party that has no interest in your liberation, in your freedom, in your happiness, in your living, in your like, in, in, in your all the things. Um, and so, you know, we did the panel and it, it was a it was a really good conversation. I, I actually ended up not saying too much just because, you know, for me, my my role there in a way was mostly to talk about why black folks should consider the Green Party. And it's a tricky topic because one, I don't know that I'm really interested in convincing people they have to vote, right? Like I will tell people, you know, consider looking at your ballot and seeing if there's something something local that's really going to have like an actual impact within your community and your district. And if there is something that exists that is local, that's going to have an impact, a referendum or whatever have you, maybe consider leaving everything else blank and just going and voting for that thing. Um, but that said, I'm really not about vote shaming people for choosing to not participate in the process. And so it's a it's a tricky topic as someone who is a Green Party member and who does believe that at the least the Green Party is outside of this mess of a duopoly that we are currently, you know, trapped in. Um, and there's, as I've always said, there's a lot of things that people can question and be concerned about with regards to the Green Party. But if you happen to live in a place where they are active and they are doing things and they are supportive of of any of of the events that are you know pertinent to Black people and and doing political education, then consider participating. And for me, that's what it has been, right? Like, you know, I and there's not one event that I have put on since I've moved to New Jersey that the New Jersey Green Party has not supported if it's sending people, if it's sending money, if it's, you know, being there to help set up, like whatever have you. Um, and I don't do any events that in my opinion are not about this attempt to provide information to my people. Like that's every, there's, there's that piece of it in everything that I'm attempting to do. Um, and so this conversation really was a very good one. And, and, and we talked about a variety of things with regard to the history of the Democratic Party and even now this current status of, you know, this this still pushing people to believe that the Democrats are the lesser evil. And as such, you have to go with the thing that's gonna harm you the least. And not acknowledging at all that in seeking support, in seeking like to be a part of something that's gonna harm you the least, you are still gonna get harmed. And so we have to break out of this, this delusion that you know we can survive by merely seeking to, to do the thing that's gonna have the least negative impact because the least negative impact still results in a negative impact. And so we have to stop doing that. And that's really what the conversation was about. And, and it, was a, it was a good one. And I really, you know, I was, you know, I, I still say, I, I don't know how I end up like <laughs> sitting on some of these panels. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, sure. And then I'm, stand, I'm sitting there like, how, how did this happen exactly? Um, but it's an important conversation. And it's one that I want people to really have. I want people to, to really start having these conversations with their families and their friends and their neighbors and, and whoever about 
why is it that people are convinced that the Democratic Party is the lesser, is the good choice because they are less evil than the Republican Party? So, uh, yeah, and I, again, there was, for me, a lot of, uh, of, of an awakening to, a, uh, 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 to my ignorance. Uh, for instance, um, I don't know anything about the Black Liberation Party. I don't know anything about the Second Rainbow Coalition. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm at least familiar with the 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 provisional government for the Republic of New Africa. Omani Uhuru was there. Uh, but could you talk a little bit about well the Second Rainbow Coalition? Because obviously, and 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 I hope I always feel compelled to remind people we're not we're not talking about Jesse Jackson's venture. With, with the, <laughs> no. <with the> <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Um, so, and let me, I don't want to mess around and, and, and forget people, but you know, the Brown Berets are a part. And so there, mm -hmm. there's a, it, it is really a lot of the groups that were part of the original Rainbow Coalition that kind of have revamped over the years. And they sought permission of the Black Panthers and all of these, um, you know, groups to say, "Is is this okay? <laughs> right? Can we can we do this with your with your blessing? And 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 is it acceptable that we attempt to do this?" And it's a relatively small group still right now of representatives we meet and we kind of share what all the groups are doing. The Poor People's Army is putting together um, a march against the duopoly. Um, they're marching against the DNC and and the Republicans to in, in an attempt to really point out like neither of these parties are good for people and we have to stop, you know, we have to stop kind of conforming to this idea that that if we play within this duopoly, some at some point it's gonna benefit people. Um so right now the the goal is really for us to work in coalition to share out what each group is doing to support each other, you know, when their events happen in um, and, and to see if we can't grow as a, as a group, you know, as a coalition with multiple organizations that are really seeking the, the liberation of, of folks who are currently oppressed and, and underserved. Right on. So it's like, it's, 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 Revolutionary intersectionalism. That's that's probably a good way to put it. That's uh, probably a good way to put it. It's um and it's been interesting, you know. They just recently they started doing a Spanish for beginners class. So if you're trying to learn to speak Spanish, you know, there's there's a Zoom that they're doing regularly to help folks who want to learn to speak Spanish. Um, you know, they offered a learn how to do um like uh first aid you know that type of thing so you know it's 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 really been interesting listening in on these conversations and it hasn't been without some because as all organizations are there's always something that <laughs> that kind of you know happens and then you have to pivot and try and figure out how do you navigate it um but you know, for me, it's been an opportunity to be around some people that, you know, I find to be amazing. And I just, um, it's been, it's, it's been great. I mean, I, you know, I can't really, I can't really complain about being in spaces with people who are legitimately trying to at least do something, right? Like, the goal for all things for me is not just to sit silently, like try, try something, you know, <laughs> we don't know what, if anything of it is going to work, but try something. Is, um, and is, is, and is the black liberation party, is it meaning to be an electoral party? Is that, is, is, or, or is it, do you, or do you know anything? I, I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't know enough to speak on it. And okay. I mean, we can certainly, and and I'm sure folks would be happy to do it if I give the option for for people to come on and and we can have that conversation about you know when they started and what you know what the true like what what's the what's the future goal like I don't want to speak for everybody and I just mm -hmm. you know I became a rep like 
a few, maybe a year ago. So I haven't been going to, I haven't been participating for super long, but, um, but it's, a, it's, it's, it, some of the folks that come on our calls, like I'm, <laughs> I'm just sitting on the call, like, how did I end up on this call? Like, <laughs> what's really happening right now? And how am I here? So. <clears throat> no, but that's what's up though. That was, and, and I, again, I, yeah, I, I just, I, it was, it was good to hear the conversation and to hear so many, uh, uh, well, felt like so many uh, black radical left of the Democratic Party voices. So that was, that was great. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure the link is in the show description so people can follow up with that. Because again, the, the sort of theme is that the idea is that there, that, that uh, to the extent that there should be any exits in the world. Uh, one of them should include ours from the duopoly. Right. Uh, and did, uh, now I can't remember and I don't have anything in front of me. Did they, was there a discussion on that panel about what, about that specific question of, of what to, where to go with the exiting? So, uh, yeah. so no, like part of the conversation was really, what are, what are your choices? Like you could choose not to vote. You could choose right. not to participate right. at all. You could choose something like the green party as some of the third party. Um, I think we actually did. And I, I feel like we did bring up Claudia de la Cruz and PSL. Um, and, and really the focus was don't, continue to be trapped within this system that is trying to convince you that you have to go along with one of two options. And it's okay to say, I'm not, I'm not going to participate in the system in this way. And so I, you know, I want to encourage people to make these opportunities and it's not going to be a fun conversation because people really, they believe there are a lot of people who sincerely believe that if Biden doesn't win, we are going to be in such a worse state. And they are sincere about it. I mean, some of the things I see people write and say and even discuss when, when they're talking about why you have to support Joe Biden and why you have to continue to, to go along with the Democratic Party. And I really sit back and I think to myself, like, are you even hearing yourself right now? Like, are you, like, you really think that anything that could be worse, and back to what we were talking about at the beginning, that could be worse coming down the line, right? That you can't, that you think you can't even imagine, you can't even survive, right? that you can't find any scenarios that are happening in this current time that make you think, I don't want to live like this. Right? Like, and, and everything is set up to, to, to promote that idea, right? Like this movie that we just, you know, the Shirley movie, like talking about that. Even when you think about how the aid workers, were killed, were unalived. And now all of a sudden we're doing, you know, we're doing study, we're trying to figure out what went wrong and we're firing people and, you know, like tens of thousands of people have been killed, right? You have, I don't even know how many starving. You have, I don't know however many under the rubble still. You have like over a hundred thousand at this part at this point who have been harmed right but we're supposed to now honestly believe that you are really looking into how this this group of a hundred and so people you know were put in harm's way because you really care about like come on man stop <laughs> right like stop playing with me I don't like I don't even understand how we're having this conversation right now don't play with me and people aren't 
I don't want to, you know, it's, I, I, and I, I, I don't want to act like people are stupid or like they don't have common sense and all these things. I, I really get that a lot of people are just, they don't have time for this, right? They don't have time to research these things and to really understand like that was not, there is no way that was a mistake because of all these other things. Right. And this this whole farce that they have going now, you know, that they're investigating what happened and they're going to relieve people of duties and da, 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 da. this is all so that you can have this idea that it's not that bad. See, look, 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 they're trying to do the right thing for this group of people right now. And it's not occurring to you to look at the group of people that they're suddenly so concerned about. And why aren't they equally concerned about all the brown people? who have already been harmed and who have already been lost, right? I don't want to talk about how bad it's going to get, you know, later on in this country, fascism and da 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 when literally 19-year-olds who call for help are being shot to death by the police in their house. I really want people to stop calling 911, by the way, FYI, right? Like, can we stop with this pretending as if things are not so bad now that we have to worry about this future so bad? Because things are so bad now. They're already so bad. <laughs> like, I, and I don't, I want people to force that conversation. I really want people to force that conversation. And it's not a fun conversation, and people often don't want to have it. And, a lot of people will be really mad at you. Like I had somebody who was literally, I had an argument with somebody about the uncommitted vote. Right? So, oh, by the way, folks should stay tuned. We're going to have some Howard County representatives of that, of that struggle coming through. Uh, and and I'd, I'd need to check with you because depending on their schedule, I wanted to see if, if, if Saturday might be open to it. Uh, but, but, yes, uh, please. But, but somewhere <laughs> on this platform or maybe both. And, right. you know, because there's a whole lot going on. But yeah, so anyway, sorry about that. But yeah, there's no, cool, stay cool. tuned, folks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and somebody saying to me, like, well, what was the point? Like, if you weren't going to vote, if you're not going to vote, why bother? And I was like, but it, it it was a vote. And they were like, well, no, 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 that, you know, the uncommitted, the uncommitted wasn't a vote. But no, they actually like circled in the bubble. <laughs> Uncommitted, like it was, it was, it was on the ballot, like it was an actual vote, and I but was they're just yelling and screaming, right? And the argument was literally that it was not a vote because they didn't pick a person, so therefore it's not a vote. And my argument is they went and stood online, and they bubbled mm. in, or clicked the box, or pushed the button, or whatever the hell they had to do, and they submitted their piece of paper, and it said uncommitted on it. That is a vote, whether mm. it's for a person or not. It's mm. a vote. And in New York, they submitted an empty ballot, mm. right? And people were like, "Oh, that's not going to go through," and it goes through as no vote. Like you, you put in an empty ballot. That was your uncommitted vote, was your empty ballot. That was your proof that I'm not messing with these people. Y'all keep playing with me, right? And I think those actions, we need to keep pushing at this idea that we don't have to comply with a system that has been set up for us never to thrive. And I don't know the best way to break it, but I know complying with it is definitely not the way to do it. So we gotta do something different. With it. <laughs> and I'm about to get us in all kinds of trouble because I've been talking to Piper and me and Piper wanna do a town hall and I don't know how the heck we gonna make it happen, but we gonna figure it out. Oh man. We gonna figure it me out. Me and Piper. We're going to oh, figure man. it out. And I want to do some form of data collection for what our viewers think are the topics that need to be part of the political mm. conversation. 
And I don't know how we're going to do that either, but we're going to do it. And I'm going to figure it out because I want input. So we'll start by having everybody call Renee. <laughs> That's 555-313-2222 and leave a message to say, yo, Renee. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. It's real. I don't know. I, I still haven't. I got to figure it. It's something I need to talk to Geechee about, actually. So I got to start poking him because I really, I, we need input and we need to, we need to, to find a way to formalize the things that we should be requiring be part of the conversation. If you want us to engage in any conversation about electoral, electoral politics, we ain't doing it unless these things are part of the conversation. Glenn Ford used to call those the bright line issues. Mm -hmm. We gotta have our bright line issues. Right. Clear and ready to go. So I will listen. So again, apologies to you and to everyone else that I'm 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 forcing us to be a little bit short today, but at least everyone will have plenty of time this time to stretch, get hydrated, get ready for warrior class. Uh um, but any any last thoughts or, or announcements or reminders or anything that you want to? Um, we're still going to let some folks join the monthly abolition workshops in New Jersey. If folks are interested in that, hit me up. Um, the next topic is police and the family and why it's not a good idea. And um, so we're going to have a whole conversation about how, you know, this this system is also negatively impacting families because you can't be poor in this country either and expecting stuff. So, yeah. What, you gonna be poor and want something? Come on. <laughs> I know, get out of here with that madness. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. It's been another great uh, uh, week and uh, uh, chalk full of, of, of mind bending psychological warfare <laughs> for real <laughs> but uh thanks to you thanks to all the remixers hopefully i'll be there with you in the chat tomorrow uh uh and peace if you're willing to fight for it like fred hampton actually said and uh stay tuned for warrior class and everything else make sure you like share subscribe make sure you have the bell rung so you don't miss anything and we will see you next time with next week, right back here with more Saturday with Renee. Renee.